Hello, hello, my name is Kate. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. And today I'm gonna tell you a few of the mistakes that I made as a amateur photographer. <laughs> when I started out photography, there was a few mistakes that I made that if I had known now, I would have changed my ways and I would have gotten to where I am today a heck of a lot faster. Gear does matter. Yes, it does. However, it's not gonna stop you from taking great photographs. That will be you practice and the knowledge that you're going to expand on as you progress through your career. Gear, yes, makes a very big difference. I photographed my first wedding, I'm not going to lie, on a film camera and that was a long time ago and it was not my best work. It's something that I don't even have the images anymore. Then I progressed up to digital and that that was obviously a very big difference. But I started out shooting on a Nikon D90 with a nifty 50 and one of the kit lenses, it was like a 18 to 105 or something. There was nothing fancy about it. And I realized that yes, gear will matter. And you're going to progress your gear as your business progresses. And gear will change things eventually for you. But if you don't have the fundamentals of honing in on your skills by mastering your your settings, your ISO, your aperture, shutter speed, even your white balance, those control your your final output. So you need to be able to, one, understand exactly how they all coincide together, how they work together to create the right image, especially in all the, your different lighting situations. You need to also be able to control your camera without even thinking about it. Because if you have to stop and pause in the middle of a photo shoot to think, hmm, what should I do with my settings? You lost the shot. If when you're starting out, you have a digital camera and you have a reasonable lens, use it. When you start making money, then you can start upgrading your gear. But at the, when you're starting out, there's a few things that you can invest in that will help you. And that can be a mentorship. There's lots of mentorships locally and online these days. And not only does it help you with, with your skills and evolving those, but you also get to meet people. And then you can also communicate with them and ask them questions once in a while, which is very valuable. Also invest on online courses, in-person courses. There's, there's so much knowledge out there that will help you really hone in your skills. And that's going to be so much more valuable to you than upgrading your gear now when financially it might not be rolling in yet. The second thing that I, should I say made a mistake at? I, I was, I didn't understand at the time was capturing my images in JPEG versus raw. At the time, I'm like, you know, I don't have the space on my computer to save a raw. Like a raw image is, you know, 20 megapixels at the time. I'm like, I just, I don't have the space. So I'm like, no, I'll just shoot in JPEG. But with JPEG, it's a compressed file. So you don't have anywhere near as much information saved from every image that you take as you do with a RAW. If you overexpose your image accidentally or you underexpose it, you can't ever get the whites back and your skin color, if you've underexposed too much, <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> You're not getting it back. You might have to invest in external hard drive, but shooting in raw will give you complete control of your images and post to be able to take it from a sometimes maybe just a mediocre image that you're okay with, but then you can take it into post and you're like, yes, you you can tweak your your highlights, your low lights, your colors, your white balance, all of that. You have so much more information on hand to be able to make that take that control. The third thing that still niggles at me today, especially if I have a second shooter or someone that's shooting with me and I go through their images and it's bad composition. How you, it, even if you have a great shot opportunity, like if you have a great opportunity to take a picture and your composition sucks, your picture sucks. <laughs> Rule of thirds is, it's huge. I use it for every single photograph that I take and it is just amazing. So, if your camera, if you haven't got your your grid, your three, one, two, three, <laughs> your two horizontal lines and your two vertical lines showing up on the back of your camera, find your setting, whatever your camera is that you're using, set that up and have that on the back of your camera. Because anytime I take a photograph, the eyes or the focal point uh, that I'm trying to capture on a image is always going to be connecting on some of those cross points or I'm going to have the bodies on the vertical lines or I'm going to have the horizon of the lake or the ocean it's going to be on the bottom horizontal line so having this all lined up can make or break an image because even just show just recently I called through um an associate of mine's images and it, it, <laughs> mm, it could have been composed differently. The composition, it could have just 
there was a lot of carpet at the bottom and there was, you know, the head is at the top of the frame. So just shifting that up can really make or break. So it's something that I know I made that mistake when I first started out, or even you have a horizon line and it's cutting straight through somebody's head, or you have a tree and it's sticking right on the top of their head. It, ma it matters. So really be intentional with every photograph that you take, even if when you are experienced and you know what you're doing, that stuff creeps up. The fourth thing that I overlooked was the power of light. A light source, whether it's natural light, artificial light, whatever it might be, if it's wrong, it can make or break an image instantly. Like it can, and it can take it from a mediocre image to a phenomenal image. If you're photographing in bright daylight, there's ways that you can control the light and the shadows to be able to make it reasonable and you can work with it. But if you have someone facing direct sunlight, well, not only are they gonna be squinting, but their, their face is gonna be so washed out that you're gonna get these raccoon eyes, you're gonna get like harsh contrast of highlights and lowlights on their face. And sometimes in weddings, you can't really control that because wherever they've set their ceremony up, you've got direct light and you're working with it. So you, you have to hone in your settings to be able to control that light a little bit more. But choosing a different time of the day or a different location can make a big difference. And I hadn't really grasped that when I first started out, but photographing in shadows or shade or under shelters and stuff like that, that can really help if you have to photograph in the bright daylight or golden hour. It is like this magical soft light. It's got this like natural airbrushing. You can really backlight your client and it is just so magical. When you're honing in your skills, mastering your shutter speed and your aperture and your focus is huge. It's it's massive. Honestly, if your shutter speed's too low, then your photo is not going to be crisp. It's not going to be clean. It's going to be blurry. If you don't focus on the correct thing on a face, especially if you're doing a portrait, like if your focus is automatic day and you've accidentally focused on a leaf, then the face, it's going to be just, it's not going to be crisp. So my trick is always to photograph and focus on their eyes, whichever one's closest to you, but keep your aperture a little bit wider open so that this back eye is not gonna be out of focus. Working with all of those together and your light sources, that's, it, it, that's where all your practice comes in. And last but not least, I used to think having something posed was gonna get me this image that I had created in my mind. That's what's gonna get it. But anytime I would ever get photos done of like my husband and I or my kids and I, those were photos that would never, ever reach my walls. The only ones that ever reached the walls was the laughter, the snuggles, the playful, the really interactive emotional photos. Those are the ones that I was putting on my wall. So when I started out and I looked through my photos, I'm like, what am I not liking about these? But then I really clued into the fact that I wouldn't put any of these on my wall. So why would my client? So I really changed my mindset to capturing the emotions that I want them to see, I want them to remember. So I changed from posing more to prompts and guiding them and having movement throughout a photo session, having them walking away from me with holding their hands and then walking to me and just being playful and flirty and, you know, snuggling. And if you're photographing families, kids are not gonna behave. <laughs> nope, they're gonna wanna run around, they're gonna wanna be playful, they're gonna wanna be kids and that's fine. But that's, I think, also what you wanna capture is, giving them an environment to be able to capture those personalities because children change so quickly that allowing those parents to remember those memories at the time, they might not love it because there might be a kid running away, but photograph it, you know, like just bring all those memories into your gallery so that then your client is gonna instantly connect with them. So these six things are things that I just, if I had known earlier that I was screwing it up, <laughs> I would have changed it. And I, I think my photography really would have evolved a lot faster than it did. I really just learned it the hard way and figured it out kind of as I went. And it, it was fine, it worked for me. If I could have used those hours a little bit more efficiently, I would have been happier. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for being here today. I hope this is helpful to you and maybe it will stop you from making some of the mistakes that I did when I first started out. If there's anything that you would like me to add to my to-do list, which is a mile long, but if you, there's anything that you would like me to add to my, my video list, this is my list, put a comment below and I will add it and I will bring it out to you very soon. Have a great day.